All right, good morning, everyone, and I hope you are all having a wonderful Wednesday. My name is Dana. I'm an educator here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and today you and I get to explore all sorts of animals in the ocean, and we're going to be doing so by following the alphabet, okay? So A, B, C, D, E, F, and as long as we can go. So we're going to start with a, and we would love to have your participation throughout this programming. So you can see down here on the screen, we just put up a text phone number. We do in fact have uh, texting. I'm not alone in the studio. Like I said, my name is Dana, but we do have Carrie joining us as well. And Carrie is going to be handling all of the magic that you see on the screen behind me as well as paying attention to this text line. So that phone number is 562-286-1838. And if you have questions or comments or observations that you want to share, uh, go ahead and send us a text. Now, no phone calls, only texting. If you find that you're watching this program after our live stream, which is at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, August the 18th, <laughs> uh, go ahead and email us your questions instead. So that email will be live at lbaop.org. Now, once again, texting during our live stream and emailing after. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be teaching and talking about these animals and talking about the letters. And Carrie's going to be helping me by sharing the thoughts that you send to her. So it's going to be an awesome program where we're all working together. We're all exploring together and discovering as much about the ocean as possible. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, we're going to be exploring today using the alphabet. So we're going to start with letter A. A. What animal are we going to explore today that starts with letter A? Let's see. Oh my gosh. Wait, Carrie, that's an F. That's a fish. Huh. But my friends, this is an angelfish. So while there are a lot of fish in the sea, um, different kinds of fish have different names. So this is an angelfish. Angelfish. I'm trying to get a letter so I can write or a pen so I can write down our letters. There we go. So A for angelfish. And so basically, angelfish are just like any other fish in the ocean, but they have some characteristics that make them unique to angelfish. Let's take a look and just see what we notice about this fish for a moment. What do you see on the screen? Let's see. What about colors? What colors do you friends see? Ah, I see blues and yellows as well. I see blues and yellows. I see some white, right? Kind of some orange yellow. So angelfish are known to be very colorful species. You can see all these beautiful scales on their body, but they also, of course, are fish. They've got fins, they've got a cute little mouth and a cute little eyeball. Um, so fish are adapted to swim in the ocean and our angelfish are right there with them. All right, Carrie, what about B? B, what animal can we explore today that starts with the letter <gasps> B. I love it. So B. I know this is kind of hard to see. I'll find a thicker pen in a minute. B. Now, these are C stars. So why are we looking at the letter B? B, B, B. Well, my friends, these aren't just any C stars. These are bat stars. Bat stars with a B. The letter B. So bat stars are sea stars. They've got five arms. One, two, three, four, five. What else do you notice about these bat stars? What colors do you see on them? Hmm. Yeah, I see some kind of reddish pink. Got a lot of orange in these three across the center. Got some real, real pink ones right over here. We've even got kind of a cream colored with pink spots. So bat stars are very unique. They can have all different colors, but they're all going to have the same shape. They're all going to have those five arms. Now let's talk a little bit more about bat stars. What do we know about bat stars? What do we know about bat stars? Starting with letter, oh, that's much better, letter B. Hmm. Well, bat stars are what we call an invertebrate. 
an invertebrate. And that is an animal without a backbone. So these bat stars don't have bones in their body like you and I, and that makes them an invertebrate. Ah, perfect. There we go. Now, you and I are, oops, you and I are vertebrates. But if we put an in in front, it means no bones. So can you think of any other invertebrates? Any other invertebrates? Hmm. An octopus is an example of an invertebrate. They start with the letter O. A jelly is an example of an invertebrate. They start with J. Let's see. A crab is an example. They start with C. So all of these animals in the ocean, so many of them are invertebrates. What else do we know about these animals? Hmm. I wonder what bat stars eat. I wonder what bat stars eat. Ooh, Scarlett noticed the colors, all of the oranges and all of the whites. That's fantastic, Scarlett. Thank you so much for joining us. So we're noticing the colors. We're noticing those five arms. In fact, those five arms are really important as far as what a bat star eats. I want you all to take your five arms. Everyone see one, two, three, four. And my head is my fifth arm. And you and I are going to give our favorite meal a bat star hug. Okay, so pretend you have something in between your arms and you're just going to wrap up. And that's how sea stars can eat. They wrap around their food with those five arms and their stomach actually comes out right in the center here, right? So if we were the star, it would come right out of our belly button and our stomach would come out and it would actually eat whatever we were eating outside of our body. And then we just slurp it all back in. So sea stars can feed on a whole variety of things, but a lot of sea stars like to eat um, clams and mussels. Um, here at the aquarium, we feed them shrimp and squid, so all sorts of little critters. But they all give their food a big sea star hug. All right, my friends, so we've got A for angelfish. We've got B for bat star. Let's go ahead and see what C Carrie wants to show on the screen today. What C we're going to take a look at. Ooh, this one's cool. What do we see here? I'm going to step off. I'm going to give you all a moment to check in. What's going on on the screen here? What animals do you see? What colors do you see? How many animals do you see? I'll tell you what, there are a lot of little fishies in there. All right, so we are learning about letter C, right? So these are our clownfish, our clownfish. Now, just like that angelfish, they're still a fish, right? So take a look at these, these fish right here. They've got fins to swim around, okay? They've got scales on their body for protection. They've got their cute little mouths to feed and their eyes to watch. So fish are swimming around. But again, these are a special kind of fish that start with a C, a clownfish. Now you'll notice all of these clownfish here are hanging out around this one specific spot. And this thing that they're hanging out in, this is called an anemone, okay? And what they do is they actually hide within these large anemones on the coral reefs, okay? And even within corals. And they use these uh, tentacles to protect themselves. They hide within. So let's go ahead and watch that video one more time. We'll restart the video for you. All right, so Carrie's going to bring that up for us, and we'll start from the beginning, and I want you to just watch the behavior of these fish. And once again, go ahead and share with us the colors, the shapes. See how some of them are going in and out of those tentacles? Now, this is a special thing. This is called a symbiotic relationship. That's a really big word, but what it means is these two animals are actually working together, both the clownfish and the anemone. And that's right, my friends, this is an animal. This is one of those invertebrates we were talking about a moment ago. And you'll see these fish go inside of the anemone and they treat it like a home. It helps protect the fish. And in turn, the fish drop little morsels of delicious dinner right into the anemone. All the crumbs from their meals. Check it out. So we kind of got, got, got two for one in this one. We have the A for anemone. And the C for clownfish. The C for clownfish. Fantastic. 
All right, my friends. Well, we are going to go ahead and check out the next letter of the alphabet. Can you go ahead and tell me what it is? F. No, that's not right. That can't be right. L? No, I don't think it's L. What's the next? Oh, D. Of course, I should have thought of that. My name starts with D. Let's go ahead and see what D animal we're getting today. Ah, Scarlet is asking, are fish, are clownfish and anemones best friends? And do they need each other to survive? Scarlet, that is a really great question. So they are friends in the sense that they work together, they live together, they hang out together. Okay, just like in here, we have another picture of some clownfish and some anemone tentacles sticking up. Um, and they do help each other survive. Now, clownfish can live without anemones, but they're losing their home and they're losing a source of protection, right? And anemones can live without clownfish, but they're losing a food source. So they work better together, okay? That's a lesson we could all learn, right? Working better together. All right, my friends. Great question, Scarlett. Thank you for chiming in. So once again, we're going to go back to D, the letter D. What starts, oh, Carrie, my favorite. So Carrie put on dolphins, dolphins. Now my friends, this animal is very different than any of the animals we've explored so far. We've explored fish, right? How do fish breathe? Hmm. That's right, if you said fish breathe with gills, you are right, they breathe underwater using their gills. Now. We also looked at um, bat stars, and bat stars also breathe underwater. But dolphins are a little bit different, okay? Dolphins are mammals, just like you and I. Now, in order to be a mammal, one of the characteristics that we all share is you and I and the dolphins breathe air. So take a deep breath with me on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. <sighs> I feel better. I feel better. Now, dolphins breathe air as well, but I have a question for you. How are dolphins breathing air if they're living under the ocean? What do they do? Mm, you're right. They come up to the surface, right? And they have their blowhole on top, and they let out their breath, and then <gasps> take a big breath in before diving again. So dolphins have figured out a way to live underwater, but breathe air. So they come up to the surface. In fact, have you ever been on a whale watching trip? The reason you're able to see whales and dolphins is because they come up to the surface all the time. All right, nice job. So D for dolphin. Now, one more thing about our dolphins. There are a lot of whales out there. There are a lot of dolphins out there. There are a lot of marine mammals. Dolphins are special because dolphins have teeth, just like you and me. And so they are a group of toothed whale. That's right, my friends, dolphins are whales. So they are toothed whales. In fact, the killer whale or the orca is the largest of the dolphin family. So dolphins are whales. All right, my friends, so we've got A for angelfish, B for bat star, C for clownfish, D for dolphin. I'm gonna forget this in a minute. What letter is next? A, B, C, D, L, M, N, O, P, wait, no. A, B, C, D, G, A, no, that's not right. Can you help me out? Ooh, someone in the studio said R. I don't think that's right. A, B, C, D, E, oh, of course, everyone, it's an E. Let's go ahead and check out what animal we have for the letter E. Oh, my God. What is this? I'm going to give you all a minute to take a look at this animal. What do you see for the letter E? E. What is this? That's right, my friends. If you said it is an eel, you're correct. So this is an eel. In fact, more, in, uh, more specifically, this is a California moray eel. Now, eels are very special animals. Eels are fish. They're just fish with a few modifications. So you might not see a fin on this eel. 
Although if you look up top, there's kind of a dorsal fin. Dorsal fins are the ones that are on the back of the fish. You can see it right there. They just don't have these fins right here, right? Now eels, they don't have scales either. In fact, if you were to pet this eel, everybody, let's go ahead and pet the eel. Hi, big guy. Give a little, little head scratch. Hi. Eels are super slippery, so I don't know if they would like that. Now, they don't have scales, they don't have fins, but they do live in the ocean. They do breathe with gills, and they do have a backbone, which is another characteristic of fish. Now, the way eels breathe is pretty special. You'll notice that a lot of eels sit here. There's my baby eel, ready? And they move around. And then they sit there and they open and close their mouth, just like that. Okay? Now, oftentimes people are like, whoa, that eel is coming at me with an open mouth. What is it doing? In reality, all it does, it's just mouth breather like this. And so that's what that movement is. The air or the water goes in their mouth, over their gills, which are right around here, and out through this hole right there. So that is a California moray eel. Now, what else do we know about eels? What else have we got going on in our eel world? Where do eels live? Do they swim around in the open ocean? Or are eels normally down on the sea floor? Yeah, they're usually down below. In fact, moray eels like our California eel right here, they like to live in cracks and crevices. So they like to live within the cracks and crevices of kelp forest, rocky reefs, or even coral reefs, depending on what kind of eel you're talking about. So moray eels like to live inside rocky cracks and crevices. All right, my friends. So eels, very slippery, right? Long fish. You can think of them like a ribbon. Can I see everybody make an eel with their arm? Eels, nice job. Now what is next? A, B, C, D, E, F. I did. Oh, Scarlet was asking, is an eel a fish? Yeah, so Scarlet, an eel is a fish. It just looks a little different from a lot of fish out there. So we're going to take a look at the letter F. Now, before we pull up an animal, I want you all to think, what sea animals can you think of that start with the letter F? F. That one's kind of hard, right? So we're actually going to talk about a fish that starts with the letter F. And I know every fish starts with the letter F. But we're going to talk about this fish in particular. <laughs> it doesn't even look like a fish, does it? This is a frog fish. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. A frog fish. It is not a frog. It is, in fact, a fish but it's called a frogfish. Now frogfish, as you can see here, they're kind of funny looking, right? They're really good at camouflage. Oftentimes they will blend in with their surroundings because they don't actually look like fish. In fact, they're usually just little blobs kind of sitting and they're really hard to find unless you look for that eyeball right there. Do you see that? Now they do have fins, but they're fins that would normally be used for swimming are actually modified and they're tucked right down under here and they hold the fish to the rock. They can even kind of walk on them. But you'll see up here they do have a fin on top. Remember that's the fin on the animal's back, which is the dorsal fin. They've got that cute little mouth we've been noticing in so many of our fish. But what is this? What do you think that is for? Well, this frogfish has a little angler hanging off the top. That's this little doodad coming right off the forehead, and that is an adaptation, something that helps the animal survive, and that little thing helps attract food, kind of like when uh, people go out to catch fish and they use bait, right? So that's sort of similar to a little fish attracting other little fish, doo -doo 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 -doo, right? Now, frogfish are usually found in pretty warm tropical waters, so we don't have any tro uh, frogfish here in California. But maybe one day we can all go on a vacation. That sounds pretty good. 
and we can all go explore an area where our frogfish hang out, a coral reef habitat. All right, my friends, so A, B, C, D, E, F, S. We're moving on to S. So our next animal we're gonna talk about is Scarlet. Oh wait, no, Scarlet's been texting us. I'm sorry. The next animal we're gonna be talking about starts with a G, a G. Now, once again, before we put before we put an animal on the screen, I want you to think to yourself, what animals start with the letter G? G. Okay, I've got one. I guess technically it starts with an F. The one I'm thinking of is called a flying Gernard. That's a G. Can you think of any? All right, let's see what Carrie came up with. Ah, a greenling. I love it. Now, I love that we're talking about the greenling because this is a very beautiful animal that starts with G. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of greenlings. This one is called a painted greenling. So we could argue it starts with P. But painted greenlings. Now, before you ask and before I tell you, I want you to take a look at this animal. What kind of animal is it? Is it a mammal? No, it's not like a dolphin or a whale. Is it an invertebrate, like an octopus or a jelly or a crab? No, you are right. If you all said it's a fish, you are spot on. So you can see here, we've got that cute little mouth we've been talking about. We got the eyeballs to look for predators. We've got fins down here and a fin up there. And if we gave this animal an x-ray, you would be able to see a backbone. In fact, if you look right in this area right here, you can even see scales. Do you see that? Nice. So painted greenlings are actually an animal that we do have here in Cal uh, California. Take a look at the background of this animal. Take a look at the background. Now, at first glance, this fish might actually be really hard to see. What colors do you see on the fish? I see orange. I see some red, some white, some yellows. What colors do you see in the background? Yeah, I see the same thing. Some oranges, some yellows, some red, some whites. I even see some pink. Right? A lot of texture going on in this photo. I feel like if I were to touch this photo, it, it would have a lot going on. So painted greenlings are a great example of a fish that is camouflaged. Camouflaged to their surroundings. Camouflaged, right? That means they're able to hide and blend in with their surroundings. And this fish is a great example of an animal that is doing that. So my friends, so far, we've explored just a handful of letters, right? We didn't even get halfway through the alphabet, but we were able to discover fish that camouflage. We were able to discover invertebrates, right? And we're going to do a quick recap from one photo to the next, keep Carrie on her toes. So we're going to start back at the beginning with our A for angelfish. A for angelfish. Check it out. Then we did the B for batfish. Bat star, not a batfish. Bat star, thank you. <laughs> a bat star. What was your favorite fact that we learned about bat stars? What was your favorite fact? Ooh, I liked learning that bat stars come in all different colors. In fact, I've even seen a blue bat star. A, B, C for clownfish. Check it out. Now, clownfish were exciting because we got to learn about the relationship between animals. Now, before we go off this screen, I want you to think to yourself, and if you want, you can share it at that phone number, 562-286-1838, or email us at live at lbaop.org. And I want you to share some of your ideas about what other relationships you might find in the ocean. What other relationships might there be in the ocean? 
Hmm. I can't wait to hear your ideas. I'll give you just a minute to think about it, and then we're going to move on to our D, which we all know was my favorite. All right, my friends, so A, B, C, D, E. Then we went and explored our eel. Oh, we didn't look at D. I jumped ahead. D for dolphin. D. D. Um, how can I forget my favorite? I just got so excited to get to eel. So D for dolphin. Now, remember, we learned that dolphins are mammals just like you and I. And we discovered that in order to be a mammal, we had to breathe air. <sighs> breathe air. So D for my favorite dolphin. Okay, Carrie, now let's go to E. Let's jump back to eel. So E was for eel. Our slippery, slimy mouth breather, right? And they liked to live in cracks and crevices. Cracks and crevices. All right, my friends. So A, B, C, D, E, F. Frogfish. Frogfish. Now, frogfish also do come in multiple colors. This just happens to be a very bright orange frogfish. But they're another great example of camouflage. So when we talked about the painted greenling, which we'll get to in a moment, we talked how the painted greenling hides in their habitat. Frogfish do the same thing. They just do so in a much different way, right? Rather than camouflaging, they kind of just... They don't move much. There you go. There's your frogfish. All right. So E, F, G. G for our painted greenling our painted greenling take a look once again back here at the scales do you see them and all the way up their body look at the colors on the fins of this fish wow you can almost see how the fin is splayed out like that beautiful animals so far just from a to g but my friends we're going to wrap it up here with our very last animal which is our h h we're going to check out the letter H, which is another one of my favorites. This is a humpback whale. So unlike the dolphin from before, humpback whales are a different kind of whale. They're what we call a baleen whale. So take a look at its beautiful smile. See all this stuff right here? That's not teeth. That's actually a hair-like structure. So imagine if you had a mustache, just like this, and then you take the mustache, and you put it into your mouth. And instead of teeth, you had a mustache. I know, right? Now what this whale does is it'll actually take a big scoop of water in its mouth, a big, big mouthful of water. You can actually see it kind of opening up here. And then it closes its mouth and it pushes all the water out through the baleen and all the yummy fish that it just uh, captured is stuck on the inside. So kind of like if you were to make pasta, and you're boiling all the pasta in water, and then you dump all the water out through the, uh, the strainer, right? So that's how these teeth work. All the food stays in and the water goes out. Now, humpback whales are found right here off the coast of California, all up and down, up to Alaska, down to Baja. They're all over the place. And so they are one of our local favorites, humpback whales. Now, my friends, once again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope you had fun discovering a little bit about our alphabetic animals today, A through H. We do encourage you to share any thoughts or questions that you had, though, because the program is ending. We ask that those questions go to live at lbaop.org. So if you are not watching the live stream, go ahead and email us. If you're hanging out, you can send your last few thoughts to 562 286-1838. Now, if we do have any school groups or teachers out there who are watching, we do ask that you send your numbers in to help us out um, to contain our viewing numbers. So if you have students watching with you, just go ahead and let us know how many students you have. Otherwise, I wish you all a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. We're going to be doing another program at 10 a.m. talking about discovering Earth and exploring all sorts of currents and water movement and the climate as it moves around our planet. So if that sounds interesting to you, come on back at 10 o'clock. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. 
and uh, have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone.